What up? What up? Welcome back into First Strike. Here we go with another game plan for you to attack this UFC fight night back in Vegas. It's Vegas 94. That means baby cages galore. I'm joined with two of the apex predators of the octagon, your bookie's worst nightmares. MMA Jeff and Subhuman Gaucho. Hope you guys are enjoying the summer. Sub, how are we feeling? I am swell, gentlemen. It's always a pleasure to see you on a Wednesday evening. And, uh, you know, this, uh, as you said, Apex card, not the best, as some Apex cards are. But uh, there's uh, some places to make money here. I think I have uh, five wagers, close to six. And I'm sure we'll have more come Saturday. Jeff, you got a fight to talk about. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great, having a great summer. Uh, looking forward to the fights as always. This one's, again, a little mediocre of a card, but we have some big ones coming up in the next couple of weeks. And uh, I do want to note that uh, I'm excited for the early 5 p.m. Eastern start this uh, this week here. Early start for the fights in Vegas. Great call. As you'll note, we're going to pop off at 5 p.m. for the early prelims. And uh, Jeff's going to pop off here and talk to us about this first battle we have on the card. He's looking at Steve Garcia, number 90 ranked. Mean Machine is 15 and 5. He's got Song Wu Cho going out there at number 56, 11 and 6. He goes by Sting. And this is a battle of battles. I'm excited to hear Jeff's look on this one. This is about as even as it gets. Both these guys are 32 years old. They're both six feet tall. They're both coming off the victories, albeit at Sting's first victory in his last three years. Jeff, tell us how you want to get paid here. Well, as you had mentioned, this is another exciting fight or uh, another even fight, excuse me, on paper. Um, Choi had a tough start in his UFC here. Uh, he's just under 500, sitting at four and five. He's the type of fighter that if he doesn't take you out early, it's this one's going to end up going the distance. However, Garcia's got some heavy hands. He's got 12 KOs, 11 of those within the first and second round. Um, he, he's got the heavy hands. He knows where to throw those strikes to get you out of there. Um He's going to come out swinging in this one, and I think he's going to get it done early. Um, this fight being a main event or a main, on the main card, excuse me. Um, I think we're going to see a lot of action early. I see uh, Garcia coming out, and uh, if Choi makes it through the first round with his head attached still, I have a feeling that uh, Garcia is going to get him out of there in the second round, which uh, I'm going to roll with Garcia KO at plus 120. I absolutely love that wager. Jeff, uh, you don't, you had me at Garcia KO. Uh, Steve is one of my favorite fighters in the entire organization. I love it. I love it. I will be riding with you. In the next fight, we've got Miranda Maverick versus Dion Barbosa. Tell us how we're getting paid here, Mike. Stakes have never been higher, gentlemen. I didn't think that I would put my 3 and 0. First strike record on the line, talking about a women's UFC battle. But here we are with a fly white situation going on right now. Miranda Maverick, 13 and 5, number 15 ranked flyweight in the world. And she's going out there against Barbosa, uh, coming in on essentially short notice. This fight was supposed to originally be Tracy Cortez. Going to be now a quick turnaround. We saw Tracy Cortez lose last week. And now Barbosa stepping in there at seven and two, the number 35 ranked fighter in this division. Um, just started her pro career, however, in 2018. And as I was digging deep into this one, here's a couple of things that I saw. First and foremost, Miranda, super proud. It took her almost 10 years to go out there and get a black belt. She worked hard. She's a grinder, and she was able to go out there and get it done specifically by honing her jujitsu game. She's a durable fighter. She's got a couple of great philosophies that I really do enjoy. First of all, uh, winners don't like losing. What a great, simple speech. She says it's her life on the line, her career, her income failure is unacceptable. She also has another saying she doesn't like. Why do I got to win or learn? Why can't I win and learn? Meaning she does not want to go out there and lose. Losing is the last thing on her mind. She signed a new contract. She was aggressive to go set up that last fight that she got out there texting the opponent, they agreed. She said, look, I'm a farm girl. I want to come out here. I want to get this victory, and I want to get anybody that's standing in my way out of it. We look at Barbosa. UFC 301 was her last fight. She was fighting down in Brasilia de Brazil, 
And she gets herself a unanimous decision, 29-28. You look at this fight specifically. Yeah, she's had a four-fight win streak. She won two fights by LFA decision. We talked previously about LFA victors moving into the big stakes here with the UFC. And we were looking for knockouts, not decisions. In fact, that last fight in 301, it looked like she gassed out. There definitely was some judge fuckery. She was missing spinning elbows. She got wobbled late and she was able to hang on in this thing here. And uh, I think that's going to be a problem for Miranda Maverick, aggressive, excited about her position in the UFC. And I took this one a little bit different option, fellas. I went to the parlay, a little same game parlay. I've got Miranda Maverick and I've got the over one and a half rounds. I think this thing goes to the deep waters and we see the judges trying to put some scorecards together here. But when I looked at the odds, Line shopping, Miranda to win by decision, priced at minus 125. Miranda and the over two and a half rounds, priced at minus 111. That is how I am opting to get paid in this fight here. I'm going to parlay these two together, and I'm going to take that minus 111. Better line than just taking Maverick by decision, and I expect that number will move by the time we get to fight night. Maverick's already getting steamed on based on this new opponent and schedule changes with Barbosa. Yeah, I don't quite have a wager on this one, but I tell you what, if this line gets big enough, I am uh, attracted by this Barbosa side. I uh, I worry about a uh, little regression with regards to Miranda Maverick. Jeff, you got anything on this one? I'm actually going to roll with Mike on this one. I like Maverick. I like the over. I didn't want to play those straight up. Um, I do like the look of... Uh, Miranda in the over two and a half at minus 111. I agree with Mike again, too. Uh, if you're going to get that, I would get it soon because it's probably going to get steamed. You got to get that one early in the week. Which rolls us into our next fight. Subs bringing us back to the prelims. We've got number 27, Luana Carolina versus uh, number 28, Lucy Pudlova. And uh, this one, again, looks pretty even on paper. We got a 31-year-old versus a 30-year-old, five foot six versus five eight. The reach is only an inch and a half difference. Um, this is going to be a pretty interesting one. Sub, what are you thinking? Yeah, I agree. This one does look pretty even on paper. I think the margins per round are honestly pretty slim. But nonetheless, I think there's a pretty clear victor here. Uh, Lucy Prulova, on the one hand, there's a lot to like about her. She's uh, She's got a losing record in the UFC, and it's pretty bad. It's three and seven. This is her second stint. But there's some things to like about her. She throws some good straight punches down the middle. Uh, she's been working on her jiu-jitsu. Recently won a couple of European tournaments. On the other hand, you got Luana Carolina. I think Luana is the side here. She opened a dog in this fight. She's flipping to favorite on a lot of books. You can find her minus 111, best available line. I, I think Luana has the advantage on the feet at distance, but especially when it gets into the clinch, she does a lot of damage there. I think where takedowns are concerned, both of these women can get taken down and held down on some occasions, but I think Luana is actually more likely to get the takedowns throughout this contest. And, you know, she has an advantage at this UFC Apex. She has fought here four times on all four occasions. She closed as an underdog, and she is 4-0. Her ROI, more generally, is great in the UFC. She's 5-3 and three in the UFC with an ROI nearly 70%. Hard to, hard to get off that in, in a fight like this. Uh, Lucy Putalova moving down from bantamweight to flyweight. I like Luana here. Um, like I said, I, th I think the rounds are fought at a fairly close margin, but I think Luana is the side. I think she wins two, maybe three. I think this is a UNAM. Uh, Luana all day, minus 111. Luana all day, minus 111. I think the big takeaway here is line steam potential. So we appreciate everybody rocking with us, checking out these early fight breakdowns. Make sure you get on those spots early. We do expect the lines to move in all three of these. Take note of the early card. Starts at 5 p.m. on Saturday, so we can bring you that first early prelim spot. And, of course, we got the Open Championship. Golfing with Gokester pops off in about five hours is that British Open. So go check those videos out. Get that last-minute action in for first-round leaders. Matchup plays. And then bring that pile of cash into Saturday so we can run it back and hurt these bookies. We appreciate everybody rocking with us tonight. 
Good luck with your bets. We'll see you guys live on Saturday.